Okay, so I've got a lot of these. As I've stated in previous posts, I'm a sensitive, which in layman's terms simply means that I can't always see ghosts, but I can sense them and pick up on their emotions. This is a story about seeing and feeling them. I was about 17, and I got my first job at McDonald's. I was super excited to earn my own money and start learning how to be responsible, budget my money, etc. Homecoming was coming up, and prom soon after, and I wanted to pay for my own dress, shoes, hair, and limo, etc. all by myself. My parents were proud of me, and so was I. Anyway, on the weekends, I would always close the store with my manager. Usually, it's just the manager that closes, but I was in the process of being promoted to manager, so naturally, I had to stay to learn how to close down the store, count the money from the registers, turn off the machines, and things like that. After about two weeks of watching my manager close, I learned everything I needed to do, and eventually, I was closing the store by myself. I closed about four or five times before the first paranormal thing happened. It was about 12.30ish when I was finally done and ready to lock up the store. My dad was sitting in the parking lot waiting for me to come out. I see him and I wave at him. He waves back. I exit the restaurant and I lock the door, and as I turn to walk to my dad, I hear this loud bang from behind me. I turn around and there's nothing there. It sounded like somebody threw something at the door after I locked it, but there was nothing there. So. Thinking it was my imagination, maybe I'm just too tired, I walk to my dad's car and get in. I put my purse on the floor of the car, and as I look up, I see this person, in all black, moving in fast motion inside of the restaurant. At this point, I'm freaking out, because I was just in the restaurant, and all kinds of things are start racing through my head about what could have happened. I ask my dad if he sees what I see, and he says, yes, call the police. Back then, there were car phones, so I yank up the receiver to dial 911. They come within 4-5 to five minutes. Whatever it is, I thought it was somebody robbing the store, is still there up until the police get there. And once they shine their light through the store, the thing literally disappears. The cops search the restaurant and nothing. They then call me into the store to review the security footage. At this point, the owner of the restaurant, independently owned, was coming in. I'm assuming my dad called him and told him what happened. We're reviewing all the tapes when the lights go out. Mind you, whatever it was me and my dad saw was not caught on tape. Just as fast as the lights went out, they jumped right back on, and now we're looking at a blue screen that says no visual available. We can still, however, hear noises from the audio. Things like, no, and leave me alone. We all kind of side-eye each other, but no one says anything. The police are probably thinking this is a prank. Fast forward about 30 to 45 minutes later, the owner and the police are walking out of the restaurant and he instructs me to lock up. I'm the last one out, again, because I have to turn the lights off and the security TV. As I reach the door and open it to leave, I feel the iciest, coldest, roughest hand I've ever felt in my entire life clutch my shoulder, and the voice whispered no. Needless to say, I screamed and ran to my dad's car, dropping the keys in the process. The police watch me scream and run, and don't say a word. Once inside my dad's car, he hugs me and tried to console me. I refuse to look in the windows of the restaurant because I'm afraid of what I might see next. Fast forward about 10 minutes later, we're home. My dad and my mom are in the kitchen talking about what happened. My mom and dad are also sensitive, but my mom is more sensitive than we because she always sees them. My dad and I see them sometimes, my mom all the time. At this point, I'm exhausted, and my mom and dad say that I can sleep in Sunday morning because of what I've just been through. Sunday morning, I wake up around 10 a.m., my parents are at mass, so I'm alone in the house. I go down to the kitchen to have breakfast and watch some TV. My mom cooked breakfast, but didn't wake me up, so she left me some in the microwave. Just heat and eat. I go into the living room and sit down grab the remote, and when I look into the TV, as I'm getting ready to turn it on, I see a tall, fairly thin black figure standing right behind me. I freeze, and I'm trying to breathe, but I can't help feel like whatever we encountered last night had followed me to my home. I close my eyes and open them, hoping that I'm dreaming or that whatever it is will just go away. No luck. Before I can let out a scream, 
I feel that same icy hand on my shoulder, but this time, it's holding me down to the point where I can't move, and it's saying, MY SOUL! And this time, the voice is loud and getting louder and louder. It sounded like a demonic voice, like multiple voices in one. I start to get overwhelmed with a sense of evil, like pure hatred running through me. It's weird, but with this hand on me, I felt like I wanted to harm the first person that walked through the door. And then, whatever this thing was shifted into a black mist and started to go through me. I could look down and see it going right through me. As it's doing so, the light from the morning starts to fade as if it's becoming night. Everything was in slow motion. All I remember is that after letting out a scream, I saw my mom and dad run into the house. My mom holding a rosary bead necklace in her hand, saying something I couldn't make out. My dad saying, in Jesus name, and that's it. I woke up hours later. My parents were crying and hugging me. They explained to me that they believed a demon or something was trying to possess me, and that they had left church early because my mom had a vision of this and knew that they had come save me. To this day, I'm 32 now, I always keep rosaries with me. I always hear voices and noises at night, and I always get the sense that something is still there, watching me, still wanting to possess me, but can't because it's not strong enough. I'm old enough now where I can keep these things at bay. My husband knows and believes in what I can do, what I can see, and what I can hear. I'm glad that whatever this thing was cannot touch me now.